Hey everybody, welcome back to Yogi's Garage. Hey everyone, welcome back to Yogi's Garage. I'm Yogi. Uh, this is your first time visiting, welcome. Uh, for my loyal subscribers, you may have realized that this video was up and then it was taken down and now it's back up. And you also may have realized that the video is a hell of a lot shorter than it was initially. And here's the reason. Uh, the information that I'm providing you is a regurgitation of the information that I gained by the M96 assembly series. It is not intended to be a replacement or a supplement for that, but more of just letting you guys know, hey, this is doable with manageable steps. And thanks to Jake and his series, it's just that. But what I did do is I provided too much information, too granular of information that's worth money. Information is valuable. That's why YouTube exists. That's why Facebook and Instagram and all of them exist because they want to know your information and that's worth money. So the video series is incredibly valuable and it is not, it's very stressful for me because, uh, you know, I, uh, I'm, I'm taking responsibility for this video series and its content and I'm taking responsibility for providing too much information. And, uh, you know, I, I feel like it's very difficult to make two groups of people happy at the same time. You have the group of people who provide the content for money to support their families to live. And then you have people who just regurgitate the information on a social media platform and it diminishes the value of what is out there. And that's where I ended up. And that was never my intention. My intention was simply to show you guys as a promotion, they didn't pay me. I wanted to promote the series to say, go out and get the series and this is why. But what I ended up doing is go out and get the series and here's what's in it. I shouldn't have done that. So I need to cut back on the information that I'm providing you guys because this information is valuable. This is something that these guys have developed over decades, 20 years of working with these cars. Who am I to give you the keys of the kingdom without going through a proper rite of passage? And that would be buy the series, learn yourself, use my videos to see, hey, it's, it's easy to do it. It's supposed to be entertainment. It's not supposed to give you the, all the answers because I don't even have all the answers and all I'm doing is stealing it from them. And I'm not gonna do that. I, uh, I wasn't raised that way. Um, and these, these folks are way smarter than I am. I might be technical, I might be in the IT industry, and that's why I presented the information in such a technical fashion, even though I thought it was light, high level, because I could get really granular. So I, um, yeah, I gave you too much information, and that information is not mine to give. I can do the work and say, hey, those steps are great, which they were, but I can't say, hey, these steps to put this console on were this, this, and this, and go buy their video series even though I just gave you all the answers. I, I can't do that. I'm a businessman, they're a business, they're a business as well. Uh, it's just the way the world works. So going forward, these videos are gonna be a way more high level, it's gonna be more entertainment. I'm gonna show you the beginning, I'm gonna show you the end, but I will not show you the granular steps. And I hope you can respect that and I hope you can understand that in order to be successful, especially in engine building or any type of automotive work, uh, you have to be surrounded with people that you, you trust. And if I can't be trusted in this industry, then what I'm doing is worthless. So, and that kind of hurts and pains me to say, but it's true, right? I mean, I get a couple of hundred views on a, on a, on a video and that's it. These folks rely on people and businesses to buy their content because it's so valuable and I can't be the chump who gives it away for free. So with that said, I hope you enjoy the rest of the video 
And for my subscribers that don't like that, I, I, I apologize. But I don't think I'm going to have many issues with people disagreeing with me because the Porsche community is filled with a lot of intelligent people. I mean, you have to be because you're, uh, you're affording such very expensive cars, so you understand how the world works. For the folks that don't, hit me up on uh, DM and we can talk about it a little bit further, but um, I don't think I'll get very, very many of those. So enjoy the video and we'll see you in the next one. All right, what you're looking at here are the new piston rings that are gonna go on the JE Pistons. And uh, one word of advice is to do what I'm doing here and lay them all out, get them all situated, figure out which the what the orientation is, and also making sure that they gave you the right rings. I don't know if you can see that, but right here is one in a plastic bag that's not part of any of these sets. And it's because they sent me the wrong one. Check it out. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that little metal tab that's sticking up right here. Um, that is a way of hooking into an eyelet on a piston, but unfortunately it's not for a Porsche engine. This is typically what you see on a Subaru. I showed this picture to Jake Raby, and of course he knew exactly what that was. And uh, so I'll be calling Ellen Engineering to get that replaced, but luckily, it's only one of these oil control rings here. Um, these, all the other ones do not have that little tab. I've inspected it, so we're good to go. And then on top of that, you wanna keep these organized. Some of you old timers might know what these are. These are single disc CD sleeves, and these are absolutely perfect for piston rings. So I'm gonna, I have six of them here. I wanna identify the six get them all together. But before I do any of that, I obviously have to gap these, piss these piston rings to make sure that they are gapped properly for my usage. And I'm starting with the top ones on the piston. And you'll notice that the number is facing up. That's what the manufacturer of the pistons says to do. I've already done piston one, and I'm basically showing you what the measurements are. Something tells me I'm gonna be doing quite a few engine builds or engine assemblies. Uh, over the next few years of my life. So I figured I'd get myself one of these and this is basically a piston ring leveler in the cylinder. You don't need to use this. You can use a piston, just stick it in upside down and get it level, but you have to train yourself to get it properly leveled. Now, I did that with my Audi uh, build. I just used the piston, but here we're talking about a high performance engine, a lot of money, I just figured, you know, 20, 30 bucks for something like this, and it gets it level every time. So let me show you how I did it. So basically you wanna start your piston ring like this, just kinda of push it in a little bit and then fold it over until it clears the top of the cylinder and get it relatively where you want it, where it sh you think it should go. And then you use something like this, you put it over it and then just, and I like to go around like this what I also like to make sure is I'll use my finger underneath to make sure that the ring is actually touching the underside of the leveler. And that's how you do it. Okay, so according to Ellen Engineering, who resleeved my 911 and made it into a, a, a four liter, they're saying the, the minimum gap should be 0 0.015 inches. You can see the number and try to gap it you'll notice that it doesn't go in easy. What I did find out is that it is this measurement here, which is 0 0.011 or 0.28 millimeters. And uh, what you expect to see here, see, just like that, no effort. Uh, you can test that theory out by going to a larger gapper. And if it's, the way I did that with the next level up and it kind of got hung up right at, the um, right at the gap. So this is where it is. They're all the same. Okay, so the second compression ring is, the minimum clearance is 0 0.016, which is uh, this feeler gauge right here. Yeah, there, really good. So I don't need to gap the second ring. That's good. One last thing I need to do. Awesome. 
I'm going to test it for light. If there's anything interesting, I'll come back. If not, we're going to move on to the oil ring. Although all the rings are gapped exactly the same way, you don't really need to organize the rings. I'm going to do it this way because this is a good practice to have. Because if you were rebuilding an engine and you're inspecting used rings, or if the rings that you have are all different sizes, you want to keep them separate because each measurement is for each cylinder. So this is just a good best practice. Okay, so far the oil scraper rings are checking out. So nothing needs to be done on mine so far. Your mileage may vary. And it's a minimum, right? So if I had to put a feeler gauge, it's probably a little bigger than that, but it's a minimum on the oil scraper. I'm gonna check out the other, the top. This is the bottom oil scraper ring. They're all the same, but I'm gonna measure them as the top. And if they come out different, I'll let you know. If not, we'll move on to grinding. So now that I know that my gap is too small, I need to use a ring filer to cut it down to the proper size. And I got a new toy to help me with just that. All right, this is my ring filer setup. You do not need to buy such a complex machine to do ring filing. I'll put a little pop-up right here on a simple mechanical human-powered filer, but I gotta tell you, I suspect that I'm gonna be doing a whole lot more engine builds in the future, uh, so I will probably need this, and I'm a tool guy. You're gonna see that in an upcoming video of all the tools that I have. This is just another one, and I've already got it all set up, but I tell you what, it makes short work of piston rings and it has this little this little gauge right here that measures it to the thousandths of an inch so it's going to make it super precise on your measurements and i figured again high performance engine no mistakes so i invested in this summit racing also makes one that you can use a drill with that will reduce the price by a couple of hundred dollars i think this one here is 650 again really expensive not necessary, you can get a $30 one and be there all day cranking it. And the reason is, is because some of these piston rings are made of steel. So steel piston rings are very, very difficult to grind down even to a hundreds of a thousandths of an inch. You're still gonna have trouble if you use a, a manual method. Uh, and on top of that, you may not get it square, right? It's very important. So this thing takes care of all of that. This here is your squaring tool as well as using this lever to help square it up. And then you can bring it in with a simple push and it starts rubbing against the grinding wheel at a set depth. So once you get it all squared up, you zero your dial and then you say, let's say I need uh, thousands of an inch. Well, okay, if I'm at zero, I can dial it in with this little guy right here as I'm going in and see, okay, I went thousands of an inch or half of it. And uh, I just keep going until I get the measurement that I need. You guys out there who know what deep, what burring is and what it can do to your cylinders, this little guy takes it away. It's a super fine stone. You just put it on there like this and tap, flip it, tap, and get it all smoothed out so there's no burring. Really cool. Let me show you how it works. You just want to do one pass. To see what it did. Okay, so technically I shouldn't have taken it off if it's square. But let me see if I can get in there and here. Right there, so you can see that it took the edge. I can't get a really good focus on it, but you can see that it took the edge off. All right, I've got this process dialed in. It's really boring. I'm not gonna take you long on this ride, but just know that this makes short work of the rings, and I'll come back after I'm done, and we'll start the ring installation on the pistons, and then we'll put the pistons right in there. Oh, by the way, I wanted to show you this. Uh, note that I'm using the wrist pins after all. These are the wrist pins off of the original pistons that came with this engine. And then I slapped some little washers here on there. If you watch my previous video, you'll note that I used PVC pipe. It's too thin. I didn't like it. It kind of bowed out a little bit. 
made me nervous because we're talking, you know, the carrier's right there and the ground's right there. That could cause a lot of damage. I've taken off another three thousandths of an inch. I had already taken one off and you can already see the noticeable difference in the gap. 0 0.015 is the goal. Let's see if we got it. Yep, that looks good. It should go in nice and smooth. I like to lay it flat against the cylinder to make sure. That is an awesome tool, man. That took like, I don't know, three minutes. If you've used one of those cheap tools, you know that that is like maybe a 30 minute job because you got to crank it, you got to keep it square. It's a major pain in the ass. That one there is sweet. This one expands really easily. So it's very forgiving, but you still don't want to overdo it. And again, we're gonna do it clockwise. So I'm just gonna clock it in, get it started on the bottom like that and just spiral it in just like that the top ring i should say and we're going to do this one clockwise so we're going to go here kind of snake it in there we go and just kind of spiral it around there and what you want to see is this, this sliding, right? There shouldn't be any binding. I'm going to use this tool and just get it to hold it like that. And I come over and I like to slowly just squeeze it and keep my hand on it because these things like to pop off. And just get it enough to where it'll go over, get it to land, and then let go. And look at that. Perfect. Same exact thing. Slowly squeeze. See how it pops off? Slowly squeeze the trigger. These things are junk, but they serve a purpose. A little bit more. There we go. A little bit more. You don't have to go that far. Now let it go. Pop it in. It looks like it's not quite. Oh, I see it right here. There we go. Now, I was smart enough <laughs> to make marks indicating which way is forward, and those marks line up with the uh, connecting rod as well. And then if you look right here, honey, you can see the rod connected there to the cap. I'm just gonna run these in and get them hand tight, maybe snug and do that for all three of them and then rotate this girl over and torque them in. Right, honey? Yeah. That 
you shouldn't be running in your bolt on these con rods if they're not fully seated. So I'm making sure they're fully seated before I run these bolts in that way. There's no gap. Nice and snug. Good deal. All right, let's do the other ones. Hey, Yogi, did you torque these bolts? Sure did. <laughs> did you stretch them? Sure did. <laughs> Very important. So for everybody watching at home, the blue mark is that he torqued it and the red mark has been stretched. What are you doing now? I'm rotating it so I can get to the other holes. Mark it. Yep. I need witness. I need, you need a witness to witness your I witness. need a witness to witness the witness. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, these uh, K1 connecting rods use ARP 2000 bolts. So that's pretty awesome. I believe these ARP bolts can be restretched, but I'll need to confirm that. Okay, torqued and stretched. We're good. I'd like to introduce you to a new segment that I like to call Dad Jokes with the Yogi. This was a gift from my daughter. She thought it'd be a funny joke on me, but the joke's on her. Let's just pick one, shall we? What did the coffee report to the police? A mugging. I'm thinking of having my ashes stored in a glass urn. Remains to be seen. Why don't eggs tell jokes? They crack each other up. Did you hear about the 45 cent concert? It's 50 cent featuring Nickelback. This has been Dad Jokes with Yogi.
so expensive, but so beautiful. Hey guys, this is gonna wrap it up for this stage of the assembly. As you can see, we got a lot done, man. We got the pistons in on bank one. That was a lot of fun. You saw I ran into some trouble with cylinder two, but patience is a virtue when you're putting engines together. I'm learning that the hard and easy way. Hopefully you found something useful. We have a lot of fun here in Yogi's Garage. Last week's video was about Gen Z's coming in here and hijacking my, my video feed and I had to fix their turbo. So now we're back on track. We'll see you next week on the Porsche 911 project, Project Pepper. Thanks for watching. Yo, yo, microphone check, make it a microphone check. Give it a microphone, I make the make it a microphone dead. Don't step to me, newbie, I could truly be moody. I could have played the fucking Grinch in the movies. I've been a part-time shadow cat, part-time. That is not a guy that I would ever want to try to battle rap. Snap, crackle, pop, my